When people look at me, they often think there's a guy who knows how to make a pie. I give off pie vibes, so it may come as a surprise to you when you hear this, but I have actually never made a pie. But today's the day I'm going to remedy that. Today is the day I'm going to bake a pie. Cook a pie, bake a pie. Cook a pie. Bake it. Charlie is working away from home at the moment. She's working in Barnsley, or as the locals call it, Barnsley today. So I've decided that so I've decided that when she comes home, I'm going to have made her a pie dinner. She doesn't know that I'm going to do this, so she's going to be the judge of the pie. She'll be able to tell me whether or not it's any good, because Charlie is a very good cook. Baker, cook, baker, cook. First things first, I needed to find out what pie I was going to make, so I turned to the oracle of all knowledge, Google. I've just typed in best pie recipe, and the second result down is Jamie Oliver, which I guess is going to be a pucker pie. <laughs> Come on now, come on, that was good, that was good. Unless you're a transatlantic viewer, in which case that didn't really translate. After scrolling through the list of pies, I decided to settle on a steak and stout pie, a British classic. I've just realized how much I've said pie as well, so I'm gonna imagine that down here somewhere there's gonna be a pie counter. Right, so I'm on the Jamie Oliver website, and I've clicked on the pie, and it's actually Gary Barlow's scrumptious steak and stout pies. Which is perfect, because if you look at Gary Barlow, you think, there's a pie man. That man looks like he knows his way around a pie. So ready. What a tune. Sure, the recipe said it would take three hours and serve up to ten people, but I was feeling confident. I think I'm going to go ahead and put myself in the capable culinary hands of Gary Barlow. So ready. The list of ingredients was massive and included something called suet, so I made my way to the shops. So after letting my shadow get run over by a van, I headed into my Sainsbury's local where I rested my phone on some potatoes so I could get the shot of me nonchalantly walking past the camera. I grabbed some mushrooms, which I was thrilled about, and I got this epic shot of me putting steak in my basket. I was seriously pleased with this shot. I managed to get my hands on the suet and use my excellent acting skills to do a bit more pretending that the camera wasn't there. And despite being in a Sainsbury's, I used a Tesco bag because I'm a bad boy rebel. And just like that, we have the haul. This video isn't sponsored by Tesco, nor Sainsbury's. But here we have all the ingredients ready for Gary Barlow's pie. Right, we've got red onion, closed cup chestnut mushrooms, which I'm not excited about. I don't like mushrooms, but if Gary says it's good, then it must be good. So ready. I got fresh thyme, but I wasn't able to get fresh rosemary, so I've got dried rosemary. So if this goes wrong, Gary, don't worry. I won't blame you. I'll blame the rosemary. So don't worry, Gary. We won't have any beef. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. I got myself some Guinness, but fancy Guinness in a bottle. And then I got myself some suet, which just like me is shredded. <laughs> First things first, I needed to get my pan on a medium heat with some oil and butter in the pan, which I did like a pie pro. Next, I had to dice some onions, and the pro tip here is to not slice your fingers off. I can already feel like I'm becoming a pie man. I think just by engaging in the process, I'm becoming a pie man. A man who pies. I do a fancy onion slice thing where I come dangerously close to ignoring my pro tip before adding the onions into the pan. Oh, lovely sizzle that. Lovely. Get a bit of ASMR in there. Beautiful stuff. The recipe then called for two sprigs of thyme, but I'm a pie man and a bad boy rebel, so I knew this wasn't enough, and I added three. So that's not gonna be too woody, is it? Surely that's too woody. Look, I'm woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Of course, a bit of rosemary as well. Didn't get fresh rosemary, sorry, Gary. But sometimes you just gotta use what you've got. That's just the way of the world sometimes. Give it all a good stir there. Didn't say anywhere in the recipe to stir it, but I'm a pie guy now, so. It's instinctual. Once you become a pie guy, you understand the way of the pie. Right, it says here to clean and slice the mushrooms. Where the f are the mushrooms? Now, as I said, I am not a big mushroom fan at all. So what I'm wondering is, can I get away with blitzing these till they're almost nothing? Because it's not so much a problem with the flavor, it's a texture thing with mushrooms. So I might not thinly slice them, I might blitz them into oblivion. I washed the mushrooms before fighting with the blender and asking one of life's more challenging questions. How clean does a mushroom need to be? Isn't that clean enough? A lot of dirt's coming off. Such a dirty vegetable. A fungus doesn't sound like a nice turn of phrase, like I'm gonna eat some fungus. But hey, when you become a pie guy, like I have, sometimes you do things for the greater good of the pie. I finished cleaning the dirty fungus before fighting the blender some more. Right, time to absolutely blitz these buggers. The mushrooms weren't behaving themselves, so I had the genius idea of putting my spoon into the high-speed blades of the blender. It seemed to do the job, and the next job was to slice the beef. You know, I very rarely cook with beef. It's not something I cook with that often. I don't mind a little bit of beef, but I just don't cook with it very often. So even though I'm now a pie man, I am a little out of my comfort zone. But you don't get to the top of the pie game without going a little bit out of your comfort zone. Right, this is an exciting time. I'm now gonna add more things into the pot. 
starting with the gross mushroom, followed by some steak, a load of pepper, a load of salt, and then it's time for the good stuff. Oh, overflowing right, that can go straight in then. And there you go, your steak and ale pie is starting to come together there, look at that. Next up I had to make the beef stock which involves some pie pro whisking before adding it to the pot which filled me with such excitement it induced a dance break. Although Danger is my middle name, I realised that cooking in a white shirt without an apron was probably a bad idea, so I put on my Mr. Rochford apron. Now I realised as I was reading this recipe that Gary has cheated a little bit. This is just a lid. This is a pie with a lid. I want to make a fully encased pie, so I have half the ingredients that have gone into it, but I'm not going to half the ingredients for the pastry, and hopefully I'll have enough to make a fully encased pie. That's my vision. And if there's one thing I know about pie making, it's that it's all about vision. I started weighing the ingredients for the pie case, which I was able to turn into a fun Mr. Beast style game. And now I've got to weigh out 100 grams of butter, and I reckon I can get this right first time round. Here we go. I reckon that is about 100 grams. Let's have a look. Oh no! 89 grams, well that's disappointing. Tense stuff. Next it was time for me to mix everything together with my hands. I'm not sure if this is a pleasurable experience or if it's a gross experience. I'm, I'm torn here. I'm rubbing fat and flour and butter together. That's weird, isn't it? Shredded fat, which was my nickname in primary school. I then slowly added the water and brought together the dough. Gary Barlow didn't tell me to do this, but I think once you've got it in that state you have to Slap it, and that way you know it's ready to go in the cling film. I then wrapped the dough in cling film and put it in the fridge so it could cool down for an hour or so. And with the pastry dough doing its thing in the fridge, I had some time to get on with some important work before Charlie surprised me by coming home early. I've watched a lot of Bake Off over the years, so I know to flour the side before rolling out the dough. Okay, let's roll this bad boy out. And so the rolling begins. Look at that, turning it like a proper pie maker. I, you can tell that I am now a pie man because I'm turning it which I feel only a real pie man would know what to do. Or a pie person, I should say. Annoyingly, in the recipe, it didn't say anything about how thick this should be. So this is uh, a little bit up to my own discretion here. But then, disaster struck. I was planning on using this round dish here as the pie dish, but I don't think there is enough pastry there to line the dish and give it a lid. So I think I'm going to do a pie with a lid, which is not what I wanted. I wanted it to be a proper encased pie, but I don't have enough pastry. I poured the mixture into a new dish, but I wasn't happy. No, that looks too, that's not enough. It needs to be higher than that. I'm not happy with this. This needed to be filled to the top because a proper pie would be filled to the top, especially if it's only gonna be a lid. Okay, so I do not have a pie tin, as I have just said. What I do have though, is a bread tin, and I think I have got enough pastry to line and fill that, so there's no rules about saying what shape a pie needs to be. You can have a loaf-shaped pie, or at least I think you can. So I am going to go completely off script here, Gary Barlow. I'm sorry about that. I am going to do a loaf-shaped pie. I'm gonna go back to the fully encased pie. That's the plan. Disaster averted, or so I thought. And then how do I get it into the Oh no, is it stuck? Is it stuck to the side? Oh, you p Why are you stuck? I'm so sorry, Gary. I thought I'd put enough flour down. Well, this is upsetting. I reboiled the dough, refloured the side, and re rolled the dough out again. Let's see if we can have a bit more luck this time getting it into our tin. That is picking up a lot easier. That is picking up a lot easier. Oh! Go on, go down you go, down you go. I think this might work. I think this might work. I then show off my chef skills by cutting off the excess pastry. See, this is the thing about pie men. You have to cut the edge off. There's, there's, there's a certain technique that sort of pie men just sort of instinctively know. There we go, a pie loaf. This is working, this is gonna work. Let's try ladle the mixture into there. There we go, in you go. Oh, bay leaf. I'm gonna stop ladling, I'm feeling lazy now. Look at that, that is right up to the brim, but there's just a little bit of room, which is good. I just thought I was filming and I wasn't. I've just been talking to the camera and I wasn't. I'm grating cheese. That, uh, the, the reason it's good that there's a gap is because there's meant to be grated cheese. I just had a whole sequence. <sighs> I added the layer of cheese before rolling out the lid of the pie, placing it on and showing off my chef skills again. Oh, I know what I can do. I can crimp the edges with a fork. Now we are layering up. Look at that. Okay, I've got some excess dough here. So my thought is that I put 
something cute on top of the pie. The trick is to do things a little bit worse than you usually would, just to give it that rustic effect. I I'll show you what I mean. I've done a J and a heart and a C on top, and normally I would do it perfectly, but as you can see there, I mean, it, look <laughs> it looks a little bit like the uh, electronics band JVC. I don't even know if JVC still exists, but that's what it looks like. Next step was an egg wash, which I even use a fancy brush for, and then it was time for the pie to go in the oven. In you go, my pretty. Okay. Whilst the pie cooked, I prepped some potatoes and beans to serve with the pie, and then the moment of truth came. Oh, Steve. Oh, it's looking good. It is looking so good. Check it out. J V C J heart C. That has come out so well. I have a loaf of pie. The loaf of pie. The loaf of pie. That's such a good name for this. The loaf of pie. Right, how do I get this out? I wasn't sure how I was going to get the pie out, but I had a mad idea. Right, the moment of truth. I'm going to try and get this out of here. And I'm going to use a breadboard. And I don't know how well this is going to go. I'm going to try and flip it. Give it one of those, maybe. Oh, oh my God, it's a perfectly sealed tin. <laughs> Look at that. Right, I've got to get it back over. Oh no. Oh, we've had a minor spillage as I was flipping it back over. Some spilt out the side. But look at it from this side. Look at it from that side. That looks great. Oh, that's, a, that's upsetting. Do you know what though? I'm still incredibly happy with how that came out. So I am gonna serve this bad boy up. Little did I know it was about to get a lot more upsetting when I realized why people don't make loaves of pie. Oh God. Fortunately, I didn't panic. A tea towel or anything. I managed to salvage the pie and serve up dinner ready for Charlie to judge. There you go. What else? Bon appetit. Mm. Is that good? Oh, ready, love. Right, let's give it a go. Let's see if you're right. So ready. Oh, that's really good. Even though it's got mushrooms in it. That's amazing. So there you have it. I am now a pie man, a man who makes pies. Right, I'm going to smash this. I hope you enjoyed this. You can smash the like button. I, I didn't plan that. That just came out. And uh, I will see you soon where I make something else, maybe. Right, bye.